Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. Back in the day, everybody lived in rural areas. Then, bam, everybody moved to a big city. It was okay at first, but then it got too crowded and dangerous and there was way too much drama. So now everybody's scrambling to figure out where they can go. The only place that's left where it's safe and cheap anymore are small towns. So it might be time to bring it back to the heartland, everybody. This is Tiny Town 2.0. So I'm gonna show you the sunset and the teeny secret airport and the cool little neighborhoods. We're gonna talk about how safe this place is. And of course, get into the drama of how the locals can really get fed up with the tourists and how this place is changing. We're also gonna talk about how one time the Colombian drug cartel used this island's airstrip to smuggle in a ton of coke. But I'm gonna begin here in downtown Cedar Key. Well, it's not much of a downtown, but it's awesome. Now, where in the world in Florida are we anyways? We're on an island, or what people in Florida call a key. But this key isn't in the keys. Everybody knows about those. This little island chain is far, far away from that. It's located here, right off the coast in Levy County. We're far away from a major city out here. We're about two hours from Orlando if you drive fast. There's only about 700 residents who make Cedar Key their home, but I bet there are far fewer people who live here, live here. That's because for many of them, this is their second home. If you've been watching my series on tiny towns, the goal is to visit small communities and talk about the reality of you making a place this small your home. Because after all, we're all tired of crime and crowded and expensive, right? Now why in the world did I pick a small island off the coast of Florida? Because this place has been called the best small town in the whole state. And I have to say, this is the most unique tiny town I've yet to cover. The goal is to see if this is really the best small town in Florida. I wanted to find out, is this place just for rich or retired people? Could you or I move here and realistically create a new life? We're gonna find out. Small towns, because who wants drama? Small towns, where you won't get stuff robbed. Small towns, aren't as big as a big place. Everyone here knows your name, maybe that's good or that's bad. Who knows? Look at this little neighborhood. You can bet a ton of these folks know each other very well. After all, when you only have 700 neighbors and you're at least 30 minutes from civilization, you gotta kinda stick together. I'd be willing to bet that there's very little that goes unnoticed in a place like this. For the folks at Cedar Key, that could be a good or a bad thing. A lot of Floridians don't even know about Cedar Key. They think it's way down south of Miami. It is not. To get here, I drove through a lot of woods in Levy County. I had just spent some time in the Redneck Riviera where things have really changed a lot. But it's way different down here. And there's nothing between these folks and the nearest town except trees, bear, panther, and crocodiles. To some, it might sound like heaven. To others, there's no way. After all, it's only one square mile big. The whole place. You can see here that most of Cedar Key is the main island, but there's other smaller uninhabited islands that make up this small chain too. Cedar Key is accessible enough that you can cover the whole place in under an hour on a bike, like I'm doing right now. It kind of looks like an old fishing village. That's because it is an old fishing village. For 150 years, most of the people who lived here were somehow affiliated with the fishing industry. But then in 1994, Florida changed its fishing laws and outlawed the use of gill nets. The new laws were created to prevent overfishing. Well, what did that do? It just about put all the fishermen in Cedar Key out of work. That's what it did. However, there's some good news. The state stepped in and retrained the former fishermen on how to farm clams. Cedar Key is now a model for the state of Florida on how to commercially produce clams. They make a lot of clams selling clams. Clams are a $40 million a year industry here. Clams are the main income for this community, with tourism a distant second. But this video is not about clams. There's a good chance you don't want to farm clams. You want to know what it's like to live here. Well, to put it briefly, it's complicated. When the fishermen were put out of business years ago, Cedar Key had to figure out a way to sustain itself. So, it promoted the hell out of itself as a tourist destination. Soon, the people came. A lot of people came. 
But that also meant taxes went up, and that sent even more long-timers fleeing for the mainland. Because of all this new tourism and word spreading all the way to Canada, there's now a concern this place will get ruined by tourism. A lot of homeowners here are turning their places into daily rentals, and that's creating a lot of animosity among those who don't want tourists around. I was here only one day, but I could see the eye rolls and the impatience among locals with all the tourists tramping around here. And I was here in the off-season, too. I mean, I guess you can understand why locals are worried about the future of the island. It's so fragile here. Way back in 1855, some big shot discovered this place, and he bought all the islands so he could harvest all the cedar trees. Well, guess what happened? They chopped down all the trees by the early 1900s. Then they tried to make this into a place to harvest oysters, but they over-harvested, so they ruined that industry too. And we already talked about how the fishing industry was taken away. So is tourism going to be the next downfall of Cedar Key? Is this place going to be able to recover if a bunch of homes are converted into Airbnbs and then they realize what a mistake it was? Then what? People told me this place is how Key West used to be. And we all know how Key West turned out, don't we? Anyways, if you moved here, you'd have to deal with a lot of out-of-towners doing things that out-of-towners do. And you'd probably want to get a golf cart and a boat. You'd probably want to learn how to fish, and you'd benefit from having a kayak or two. Nature lovers would love it. It's a sportsman's paradise out here. So yeah, it's touristy, but this still might be the state's most laid-back place. There's no chains here. It's all mom and pops. There's only one gas station in town, and there's no stoplights. Here's what the school looks like in Cedar Key. This is a K-12 through school, people. This is the smallest public school in the entire state of Florida. Last year, there were only about 250 kids in the whole school. That's like 19.2 kids in each grade. Talk about a great one on 19.2 education, right? It's Florida, so wintertime is when all the snowbirds come in flocks. The summers are far more quiet here. But on summer weekends, folks from all over the western side of the state pop in for a quick trip, but they're gone by Sunday afternoon. Some people who live here stare at the water all day. Some fish, some boat, others own small businesses that cater to tourists, but they're just as likely to be closed as they are open. It's very slow paced here. There doesn't seem to be a schedule here, or at least one that people stick to. So how do people wind up here? Well, a lot of the newbies come as tourists, and then they eventually fall in love with the place, and they sell their homes and possessions and move here. They come, they see, and they come back to stay for good. For $235,000, you can have this little plot of land that you could put your own restaurant in right downtown. $235,000, and you could have this land right here. We're now on the southern tip of Cedar Key near downtown where all the restaurants are. There's six or so places to eat along with a smattering of cafes and smaller little nooks. And if you can believe it, there's actually an airport here. It's the smallest airport in the state of Florida. On weekends, rich people from all over the South fly their planes down for a few days. I'm sure it's lovely for them. Now you're probably wondering what the neighborhoods look like. Here's a look at a few different areas where folks live. I'd say it's definitely quaint. Most of the homes are older and many are in need of repair. There are some very nice homes scattered throughout the island and each street sort of has its own flavor. If you wanted to buy a home here, it's going to run you about $400,000. That includes some of the little tiny rundown places and the newer homes. So it ain't cheap. In fact, the cost of living here is too high for the service workers who work on the island. I talked to folks at two different restaurants and they told me just about everybody who works here has to drive in about 45 minutes from a nearby county because he can't afford to live on this island. That sucks. There's some condos and apartments here, so you could likely rent for a while and see if it was your thing. You just might. If you work from home or wanted to retire here, there's really nothing like it anywhere I've ever been. Did you know that according to the latest census, there's only one black person that lives on Cedar Key? Mappy, why would you even bring that up at all? What does that even have to do with the video? Sometimes I think you need racial sensitivity training. What the hell, dude? 
Well, I was here. I stayed at Pirate's Cove Cottages. It's an adorable little place, about a five minute bike ride from downtown. You get your own little cottage along the water. We're gonna meet the owners, Lisa and Mike, in a bit. They're one of many couples who came here on vacation and then decided they wanted to live here forever. So you can make it happen, people. Now, is this place safe? That's a big yes. It's very quiet and peaceful. Walking around at night and you can hear the local news playing through a screened in porch or pick up snippets of phone conversations. It's hard to get away with any sort of crime here. There's only a few hundred people here year round, so any strange behavior sticks out. Something fishy happens and everybody knows about it, you can bet that. Last year, there was one reported assault on the entire island and four thefts? In Los Angeles, there's been an assault and four thefts since I began this sentence. It's so safe here that I was told many times by locals that I didn't have to lock my bike up. Wait, let me back up. It's not perfect here. Remember the airport we saw earlier? Whenever you have a small town with little scrutiny, people see an opportunity. Well, back in 1990, a man moved to town and he recruited a bunch of local fishermen to help him smuggle cocaine onto this island using this very airstrip. He'd fly the drugs in here from Columbia on a little plane and then ship the coke into Miami. For a long time, it went totally under the radar. It was kind of a brilliant idea. A small little airstrip off a of barrier island 24 miles from the nearest stoplight. Who would have thunk it? Well, eventually things started to unravel. I mean, how long can you pull that off in a place so small? Well, it turns out when they caught the guys, they realized they had smuggled in so much coke through this island that every school kid in the state could have gotten high. Understandably, there's going to be a lot of gossip in a place like this. If you can stand everybody knowing your business, I guess you'd be okay because secrets don't remain secrets for too long in Cedar Key. Sometimes that creates drama. If you moved here, you'd be welcomed, but it's likely you'd be scrutinized and talked about behind your back. That's just life, right? You'd also have to form some sort of opinion on the future of the island. I hear the town council meetings can get pretty heated. While out and about in Cedar Key, I saw a lot. One morning, I ate breakfast at Annie's Cafe, a place that's so Florida. Some days the bugs are so bad here near the canal that you can't comfortably eat on the porch. But this was not that day. I also ate dinner at Steamers, a chill place with dollar bills on the walls. I inhaled their lobster mac and cheese. Wow, it was good. It's right along the water, but pretty much everything's right along the water in Cedar Key. Here's what the view from a table at Steamers looks like. Way off in the distance, I think you can see the smokestacks from the Tampa metro area across the Gulf. Riding around the island one morning, I came across an old fan boat, just like the one from the TV show Flipper. Remember Flipper? They call him Flipper, Flipper, faster than lightning. No one you see is smarter than he. I spent an evening at the Tiki Bar at the tip of the island. It looks like somebody converted a storage shed into a drinking establishment. Totally my kind of place. And of course, there are the sunsets. Here's the view from the Tiki Bar. Every night is a different sunset, clearly. I mean, that's nature. You're surrounded by marshes and hundreds of teeny little islands, most of which will never be inhabited. Cedar Key, the kind of place where you listen to the birds and you can hear the creaks of your neighbor's porch swing. This is very much old Florida, and it's nice to see that pieces of old Florida still remain. So to tell people, you know, what, what it's like living in Cedar Key. I know you guys moved there um, specifically after visiting for a while. Uh, you decided, let's, let's make this happen. Um, yeah, we've, we've been coming to the island since 1996 together, and all of our travels, you know, we just kept keep coming back to Cedar Key because, again, you're just away from the crowds or away from the craziness. And, uh, and yeah, we've, we've been coming here since 96, and we just felt like this was, was always felt like home. So uh, we've been here four years uh, on the island now, so and, and life is good. So Yep, absolutely. No, we can't even imagine going back to – where we were, which we loved where we were at the time, which was, you know, uh, North Atlanta and suburbs, but it's just, it's a huge, huge difference. Lifestyle change for sure. 
and we we knew what we were getting into but it's been so much more than we ever thought it would be yeah cedar keys like uh mayberry you know everybody knows your name and you know you can't uh even go to the post office without spending a half hour because you get you know stuck talking to you know everybody that you know so but that's why which is it. really cool we <laughs> love it so we love knowing everybody on the island yeah uh you know it's just we're it, the community's phenomenal it's just one one huge happy family here it's really really cool stuff so versus being you know in a big city you know people feel like you're just another you know number you know out there per se so yeah, what's it like living there? You know, I, as a, as somebody who passes through for a day or two, I can appreciate the, the little beach and the restaurants and the downtown and the, the the beautiful nature and the sunsets and and the small little um, you know neighborhoods and just it feels like you're not in in America. It feels like you're you're on a vacation exactly. land. But That's like really cool. Yeah, but like as a resident, what's it, what's it actually like living there? it's it's different for sure so because it is a small small town so i mean you we've we've got a golf cart it's a golf cart community you know we've we hardly ever drive our vehicle so the whole island is two miles square so we're on the golf cart cedar key's all about nature enjoying the outdoors you know and 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 we've always loved uh living living outdoors as far as you know with our our decks and swimming pools it was all about outside living um i think i think uh a lot of people that move here are typically older than us you know they're coming here to retire um so when we came here and we had a kind of a younger family i guess you could say uh it was it was i think it was a breath of fresh air for for some people um because they wanted to see some new life you know kind of starting not starting a business but taking over a business and just kind of putting our own spin on everything. And um, because a, a community like this, if it's always going to be retirement, is never going to really, I guess, thrive. You know, you need the new people coming in and, and, and doing things. Um, so in that perspective, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, it keeps us busy. We're not bored by any means. You know, a lot of people come here to retire because there's not much to do. But for us, there's a lot to do because we are business owners. Um, and we had a, a, a daughter at the school and, you know, we're very social. We go out a lot. So it's it's been interesting because, um, I don't know, we just we meet everybody through all the different things that we're doing. Um, but we're definitely not bored. I think a lot of people would be like, how can you live there? There's nothing to do. <laughs> but for us, it, there's always something to do. Yeah, again, mm -hmm. if you love nature, you know, kayaking, boating, and bird watching, that that kind of thing, it's 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 all about the outdoor living. So Yeah, I mean, not every place can be, you know, not every place is perfect. Um, you know, we, we talked about all the great things about Cedar Key. Um what are some issues or challenges that you guys face out there um, as a community? Well, I mean, I would say the challenges, I mean, there's a few of them would be, uh, you know, not a huge challenge, but I mean, we, we are remote. We're an hour from the closest doctors and hospitals. Uh, you know, I mean, we do have, you know, certified EMTs uh, that are always close by that are always awesome. But as far as somebody that's got, you know, uh, issues that are, you know, need care, you know, once a week or whatever to the doctor. It, that's a challenge for some people because it is an hour uh, to the to the next closest big city. Um, and then as far as any shopping uh, goes, you know, we're an hour from really from the biggest uh, box store, you know, Walmart, Home Depot, that sort of thing. So if you're used to that, uh, which we were, you know, coming from Atlanta, big city, every a uh, store and restaurant known to man was, you know, within, you know, a quarter of a mile. So, uh, so here you got to really, I guess, do some, some planning. planning in advance to, before you head out and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go to the next uh, biggest city, which is Gainesville. And, you know, every two to three weeks we'll go there and load up on, on stuff, you know, Sam's club and things like that. So, yeah, another another thing that's also amazing is uh, Amazon. 
Yeah. <laughs> I know some Amazon people delivers on the don't island, argue so, like it, but like, uh, one to two days and, you know, yeah. so if it's something you don't have to have There's right away. Not a day that goes yeah. by that we didn't have some kind of package yeah. on our doorstep. Yeah. So, um, but as far as that goes, I mean, it, it, you know, a lot of, we had a lot of friends uh, that told us, what are you crazy going down there? What about the hurricanes? Um, you know, and you can't live in fear. I mean, if you look around the world right now, what's happening, I mean, you got the wildfires, you know, you've got tornadoes and, and, uh, and whatnot. And, and anywhere you live, you know, gonna there's going to be some kind of, some kind of happen, risk, you know? So for us, at least with a hurricane, you can, you can see it coming. So you got well in advance notice. Uh, you know, we're not far. If things got really, really uh, hairy, you know, again, we're, we're an hour from getting inland. Um, but we've been through quite a few storms already. Uh, and, you know, the locals, people have lived here for a long time and that have, haven't left the island for many of the hurricanes, you know. So we're a little protected over here. You know, there's a lot of barrier islands around us, so which, which definitely helped. Not to say we're immune from, you know, a major hit, but again, you can't live in fear, you know, I'd, I'd rather take that risk than, than sitting in traffic, uh, just wondering, you know, what if, <laughs> what if, so, mm-hmm. but, um, but yeah, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather be on the other side of it and, and stay positive and, you know, do people ever, um, come think they're going to conquer realize this isn't for me and split like fast. You, do you, and you've been there four years. Um, how yeah, often does that happen? Haven't really seen that. Most, no. there, most there's, people, there's been a couple people figure it out. I mean, either, really, really you either quick. love it or you don't. It's, it's a very small, hand. it's not everybody's cup of tea here yeah. for sure. But it, again, if they did their research, they knew where they were coming. Right. They would know it wasn't for them. So. And for us, you know, for us, we've been coming to the Island. For, for over 20 years, we knew what it was, what the community was, what the island was, and we bought an existing business. So it's not like we were coming here starting a business from scratch. So we knew what we were getting into. And it only grew from there. Yeah, and there, I mean, it's an island. There's limited places to build. Are they? Um, are there? Are there more construction? Uh, is there more construction going on? Are they? Are, are they adding more homes, or is that? Are we, it's are you very limited. Up? I mean, the, the island is, is like I say, two miles square. So, I mean, it's very limited on, on space. So, uh, you know, the cool thing about Cedar Key, they have really strict building codes here. You will, you'll, you'll never see anything over three stories, um, you know, like the other coastal towns that have just exploded with the high rises and, and what have you. This is true old Florida right here. And, and the people that have lived here for generations, including ourselves, uh, want to keep it you know, true old Florida. Uh, there's no commercial chains on the island. Everything is locally owned and operated. So you'll never have a Starbucks here or McDonald's or so, which is really cool for us. So it's very, very unique uh, spot for sure. Yeah. And it's not a typical uh, beach destination like a lot of other coastal towns in Florida. Um, so that's kind of what makes it unique as well. Mm-hmm. I had heard that, uh, you know, tip typical, you are, you were still holding on to old Florida, uh, which is great because I, I saw a lot of the state and I, I love old Florida more than new Florida. Uh, I think a lot of people would probably say that, that have lived in your state for a while. Um, I had heard that people are, you know, the Airbnb thing is starting to kind of encroach where you've got people that are like out of town that are like daily rentals and, and, and there's kind of like people are like, not wanting too much of that because you don't want to turn into Key West, right? Correct, right, correct. Right. Yeah. And, and we do have a lot of our guests, you know, if anybody's been to Key West, a lot of people that, that visit Cedar Key, they they say Cedar Key's Key West 50, 60 years ago. Uh, we still love it down there, but it's definitely crazy and busy. So at least uh, with the shallow shelf here, we'll never have the cruise ships coming in, <laughs> in here. So uh, with the sea of people, you know, um, but, uh, but yeah, it's really cool stuff. You know, Cedar Key's a true working waterfront community. Uh, so, uh, with the clamming, uh, operations that go on here, I mean, we're, we're servicing most of the country, uh, with clams that come right, right out of Cedar Key, uh, which is really, really cool. So it's just not, you know, 
a tourist destination. It's a it's a true working waterfront. Um, a lot of guests lately that we've had yeah. have been getting realtors because this oh, yeah. is their yep. everybody's fed up with with what's happening, you know, out there. Uh, you know, and that's that's what's cool about Cedar Key as well. Not to say we're immune from all the issues in the world, but you know, we're we're kind of hidden away. Yeah, how many homes for are for sale at any particular time that are on your island? Oh man, um, it varies. Yeah, Supple. I feel like it's like this. Um, sometimes there's quite a few. Yeah, you know, with with mm -hmm. everything happening the way it is now, not as many because yeah. a lot of people are grabbing. I, mean, I would say there's probably less than a dozen <laughs> on the island right now. Would you say on the island? Yeah, maybe plus some condos. Yeah, you mm -hmm. condos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do the do do locals get frustrated with tourists uh, at times where where it's like okay you know too many people you know uh, typically can, on holidays I can see I can see that yeah but I mean that's gonna be anywhere yeah you know yeah. when it, when you live here and you don't want a mess of people coming yeah especially festivals and yeah. holidays festivals and the when holidays it tends to get busier um it's different it's different but it's part of living here too so. uh you're talking a fraction of the price of anywhere else on the coast or or if you're buying a house or a piece of property it's definitely less expensive than, than being down on the keys or or anywhere else in the, on the coast so very unique uh little island so I'm sure there's a lot of people that are that are very envious of your lifestyle. Oh, absolutely. You know, and it's one of those things we, <laughs> yeah, we tell people that all of it, we're no different than any any of y'all out there. So uh, don't be scared. Just do it. Seriously, so. if, if we can do it, anybody. Can. You know, if, if you're thinking about moving to a small town and you want to get off the map and whatever, uh, there's no there's no more perfect place that you could go to to escape and. You know, uh, and unwind and just change change everything how feasible is it for the average person and and your your average people i know i mean we're all average people um but like for for somebody that's like that that falls in love with the idea of living in a small place this place is a small town um how feasible is it for for somebody to to, to move there um without having to to change like you know um there aren't job opportunities probably i mean there's one small school um you know it, it's definitely not a big city so how feasible would it be for somebody to move, move to cedar key um i mean i like you said we're average people you know and and we took that jump but it wasn't it was a risk but it was an educated risk and so it was kind of like just getting to know the area more, knowing knowing more what we were getting into before we made the leap. Um, but financially, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, when my kids are done with school and they're out of college and maybe we'll think about it. And I don't know. It's kind of like when people say, oh, we'll have a baby when we have enough money to have a baby. Right, well, right. you're never going to have enough money to have a baby. You, you figure it you out do and it. you do it you just do it um so for us it was just kind of like we, why we, not we educated ourselves and it was to the point where we knew what to expect or at least kind of what to expect and it's been like i said it's been so much more than we ever could have thought of um it, it, i don't know i can't even explain it but a lot of people are nervous of course, to take that jump. And I, for one, would never have done it without this guy. <laughs> yeah. right. So it's the, it's the balance of both of us. You know, I was doing a lot of research. He had the great ideas and it was just kind of us combining everything into, and it, and it was our past, you know, um, opportunities that led us to do this as well. So, but I think it's feasible for anybody that, that really wants it. You just have to want it. Yeah. Yeah, you guys lived in in the um, suburbs of Atlanta, where 
the traffic is probably the worst track I've ever seen in my life. A lot of people don't understand how bad That's Atlanta traffic bad. really is. It's off the deep yeah. End, so. yeah life, life is too short to sit in traffic on hours yeah. on end, day after day after yeah. day. We were in the car two to three hours a day, and it just, it just wasn't healthy. It wasn't a healthy lifestyle. It wasn't fair for our kids. It wasn't fair to us, you know. And, um, and we're the kind of people that always looked, you know, on down the road where we're going to be five years from now, 10 years, or we're still going to be, you know, sitting in, in the same traffic, you know, day after day. And it's, it's just like, let's, let's, let's go. Let's, let's go enjoy each other, enjoy life. And, and, uh, and we just never look back. It's, it's really, really unbelievable. And I think mm-hmm. in the back of our minds, it was always like, well, if it doesn't work out, we'll go back. Yeah. We'll buy a different house. We'll go back. We have all our friends there. We've got family there. We can always, so we were, we're back there, you know, you were so. talking about jobs and whatnot, you know, and what's cool right now is that, you know, with COVID as horrible as it was, it's allowed people to work remotely. So there's so many people coming here uh, that, you know, they can be anywhere in the world and, and do their job on the computer. So a lot of people that they are moving here and they're able to keep their same job, but they're in a totally different, more laid back, stress-free environment. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.